cool. Well, I just want to thank everyone uh, for being here today, Hal, for hosting this. I'm so thrilled to see you all be back here in Gainesville for Apartment Music 34. Um, so I'm sure we're going to have a really fun afternoon. I'll hide all the folks from coming in from home. Terrific. So um, today I'm going to do a um, what I call a 2019 realization um, of a song I did back in 1983 um, under the moniker of Sadistic Gossip. It's on um, the classic cassette album, Confessions of a Boop <laughs> Addict. Um, I don't want to get $20 to the cuss bucket. That's New York prices, you know. Um, so anyhow, um, and the song is about the early uh, Soviet poet Vladimir Mayakovsky, um, who uh, he's one with it. You know, you see pictures like kind of from you know back, here, very futurist looking from the teens, um, with the shaved head, and the story is that he committed suicide because uh, after the revolution there in Russia, you know, the bureaucrats really kind of moved in pretty quickly, and so I think he became very disenchanted. Um, that's one story, though. If you go on Wikipedia, the other story is that a jealous husband got to him. So, um, but, you know, that's a story on that. So, anyhow, the song is called Dead Poets Don't Shave Their Heads. Dead poets don't shave their heads. Dead poets don't shave their heads. terribly powerful, that seemed too big to be born, too strong to be kept inside, feelings of love, of loneliness, of anger, of terror. In regular life, we learn to control our emotions, to contain ourselves, to be reasonable and quiet and objective. Strong emotions can be good for poetry, though. Emotion can put music into language, and losing control and poetry can be good for inspiration. Try writing a poem of rage or protest. It could be about something that you are in fact really furious about, a fight with a friend, for instance, or some way that you have been treated that is wrong or unfair. Or you can exaggerate or invent feelings about some rather ordinary injustices that you have to do what other people say, that you live in a certain place or a certain age, the weather is horrible, let yourself go as Mayakovsky does. Don't try to be modest and fair and objective. Be wild and crazy and boastful. Exaggerate everything. Assume that what happened to you is the worst possible disaster. As important as anything that could happen to cities, countries, mountains, such as Everest, or the ocean. Try comparing your feelings or parts of your body, your heart, your brain, your eyes, to parts of a collapsing, besieged, or disease-ridden city. Make your poem full of streets, hotels, subways, factories, 
bridges, airports, smokestacks, and electricity. You might like to make an emergency phone call in the middle of your poem to your mother or to a friend. Talk from the midst of what you are feeling as if you were, it was all still happening. Be unreasonable if you want to, bringing in whatever injustices or feelings that for the moment seem related. Use tough words, not obscenity, but the kind Mayakovsky uses. Words like amputee, swindlers, reeking. Use short lines or some short lines and some long ones. The poem can change around a lot. Maybe sometimes it'll be loud like a scream, sometimes quiet like a whisper. Dead poets don't shave their heads, signed by M. Dead poets don't shave their heads. Woohoo! Light my fire, signed by M. Okay, now next, I like to do a song from the uh, Teenage Jesus and the Jerk songbook. <laughs> yeah, see which alien voice here. I got my alien voice. Okay, good. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is at Lydia Lunch's first band. I'm sure you all know that. And um, this is a little uh, something called The Closet. Thank you. All right. Girls on Fire, Apartment Music 34. 